Hey Ruby's! Welcome to my channel. It's me, Dominique LaRue, back again with another video for y'all. And if you are new here, make sure that you subscribe and you click that little bell so that you don't miss an upload. And if you are returning, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. And we go talk some shit. Not the titty bop. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. And we gonna talk some shit. Girl, the things are singing today, baby. The, the gross is at, child. But I'm here for... A more serious topic i wanted to introduce like a new little segment called let's smoke about it so you know go ahead and roll you up some herbs locate your lighters okay man i'm talking locate your lighters because we're gonna sit down and we're gonna have a little session today i want to talk about mental health because that's important and I know I do a lot of playing on this channel and I haven't really come with a whole lot of serious content but I'm I'm much 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 more than what meets the eye um so I definitely want to discuss those things with y'all and talk about why it's important the stigmas in our communities and raise awareness so that we as a collective can become much more emotionally intelligent, have a lot more compassion for one another, and also try to help y'all, you know, find resources because mental health is important. Like, we go to the gym, we get our surgeries, bitch. We go to the doctor, we go to the dentist, we go, you know, and we do all of these things to take care of and maintain the physical when, if the mental ain't together, child, all this gonna be the fell apart. So, locate your light of time, let's smoke about it. All right, without further ado, fight up. I prefer the Blazy Susan. Oh, y'all can't see that. But I prefer the Blazy Susan cones. They are pink and they so cute. And y'all know if it's pink, I want it. So. We're going to jump right into this thing. First and foremost, what is mental health? Unless you've been living in or under a rock, what is mental health? I'm going to tell y'all per Google what it says, okay? Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. It also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life from childhood and adolescence through adulthood. And I 100% agree because as life progresses, mental health becomes, to me, I won't say more important, but I feel like sometimes we, we lose sight of how important it is to have a healthy mental state. You got to understand, you know, as we get older and as we get grown and things happen and, you know, we lose people and shit just be happening and and. Most times, you know, circumstances beyond our control. So mental health is super, super, super important from childhood to adulthood because the things in your childhood can affect the mental health of your adulthood. And if you're not emotionally intelligent, if you don't have healthy coping mechanisms within adulthood, child, you're going to be fucked. You're going to be screwed. So the reason that this topic is so sensitive to me is because like as far as mental health goes for me when I was growing up, I have two parents that have issues on the mental health <clears throat> spectrum. Now that's not to take away from my mom and my dad because they did the best they could with what they had and I turned out pretty all right, right? Some things could be better. Some things I wish would have never happened, but I'm a bad bitch. And they parents hit a bad bitch. So shout out to my mom, shout out to my dad. I'm just telling my story, okay, period. So many people that know me know my mom has bipolar disorder and she's had bipolar disorder since I was, since before I was born. And my father is an alcoholic 
and he has had that problem as well since before I was born. So growing up, I know a lot of people of most black households, most black households, mental health was kind of non-existent. It wasn't a conversation. Um, it wasn't nothing that people really took seriously. But from my perspective, you know, my, on my end, it was very, very different because of my circumstances with my parents. So I learned about mental health and the importance of mental health very, 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 very early. Um, I may make a more in-depth video ab about that, um, but you know, I don't, want this, I don't want this to get too heavy. <laughs> I don't want this to get too heavy for me. Um, but yeah. Mental health was always a thing in, in my household because my family members were always reminding me to prioritize my mom's mental health because they didn't want anything to happen to her to where she would have to go away or, you know, something like that. And at the time, as a child, I, I didn't really understand it because when I was, you know, I was little and my mom is a very, like, functional person. It's not like like that like she needs to be institutionalized or anything like that so as a child you know everybody's telling me what to you know what to do how to say like i was i had to be particularly sensitive to the situation and i didn't really understand that when i was younger because in my eyes my mom was a regular fully functioning adult but as a child i you know i didn't understand the severity of the situation and again like I said like my mom is it's not like that but we all have our struggles and then the situation with my dad he had been in and out of programs and you know trying to manage that and stuff so I was very keen and aware of mental health counseling psychiatrists psychologists um, rehabilitation centers, Alcoholics Anonymous. So I didn't have that whole, oh, what is mental health? We, we just pray about it, go to church. Like it wasn't like that. When I was young, girl, all of this is about when I was young, but I had my own personal trials and, and tribulations as a child. I lost my big brother I lost my big brother when I was eight years old to the drug ecstasy he overdosed and he passed away he didn't live out here um he was my dad's first child I have a brother and a sister both of them were living in Las Vegas with a mama at the time and our brother passed away. I was eight. He was 21. So this is like my first experience with like death close to me. Because even though we lived in different states, like that was my big brother. Like he was obsessed with me. Like he, I was his baby. Like he loved me. So when that happened, I went into a very, very, very dark space. And I was only eight. So I really, I really didn't understand the things that I was feeling. Um... And it started to affect me like I would cry a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I just became like really, really depressed because one, they kept it from me. But that's another story for another time. It was Christmas time. I was eight years old. They didn't want to tell me my brother passed away. So they told me after the fact. So I didn't get to attend the funeral or anything like that. But having been a parent myself now i understand but i would have liked to be there and be with my family and be with my sisters but i was eight and other people was making decisions for me so that's just how that went so um that happened and it really it really took a toll on my mental health as a child and then that same maybe like i'm trying to think i know 9 11 happened in 2001 so I think 9/11 happened first 
because my brother died in December. 9-11 was in September. 9-11 happened first. And I know it might sound crazy, but 9-11, like, really, really affected me. 9-11 had me, like, scared as fuck. Like, I thought that every second that I turned around, there was going to be planes flying into buildings. We was all doomed, and we was all going to die. Because that's what I kept seeing over and over on TV, over and over. And then, like, I didn't live too far from the Exxon plant, baby. Like, I thought they was coming down here, and they was going to blow us the fuck up, and it was going to be over with for everybody. So, I'm over-processing and over-analyzing the situation that's going on. It was a, a societal tragedy, and it was affecting me. My eight-year-old ass, you know, at such a young age, I didn't know how to process that shit. I didn't know how to do nothing. Like, I didn't know how to do anything. And, like, now that I think about it, I don't know, y'all. Was 9-11 2001? Was it 2001 or 2000? I know I was in the 2000s, forgive me, but I was there and I was at school. I remember where I was at. And they we they played that shit of them on them towers over and over and over and over and over. So, I was scared as fuck. So, that societal tragedy mixed with me losing a sibling at such a young age told me up. It told me up. And I just started feeling like I was going to die. I started having, like, this bad, bad, like, death anxiety, which I ain't going to lie. To this day, like, I still have really bad death anxiety. I have a hard time wrapping my mind around the fact that I'm going to die one day. Like, I be freaking out sometimes. But I experienced such tragic loss at such a young age. And then on top of that, two years later, you know, like, my, my grandmother passed away. And she down there raised me. Like, she did somebody I'm in the house with. So, I took a lot of major losses, like, by the time I was 10 years old. So, at this point, I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up in school. I don't care about nothing no more. Um, I'm just really having a hard time. I'm just, I'm having a hard time with stuff. So, once I get, like, in middle school... And, like, my grades started dropping and my interests started to change. My parents attempted counseling for me, but I, I didn't feel like I ever was matched with anyone that could really reach me. And that's why I'm so glad that as an adult, I'm able to, like, handpick my therapist and I got a little bit of insurance now, so I got a little more options open um, to me. But I, I did go to therapy and counseling as an adolescent, but I never really felt like I identified with anybody or that anybody identified with me. It was always more of the same, like, oh, fill out this questionnaire, tell me a little bit about what's going on, and we're going to put you on some medicine. And it's like, I don't be taking that shit because it's like, bitch, I don't need medicine. But, of course, I didn't know that. But I knew I didn't want to take that shit. I knew I wasn't interested in that. So, we tried counseling for me when I was younger. But at the time, I, I didn't feel like nobody was reaching me. I didn't feel like nobody really cared to try to get to the real root of the problem. So... I wouldn't say that that was successful at all. So, as we fast forward to my adulthood, my mental health is deteriorating more and more. Um, honestly, because of lack of emotional intelligence, lack of support, and it's not like I didn't have support, but it wasn't the type of support and positive reinforcement that somebody in my state of mind needed. I felt very hopeless. I felt very unmotivated. I felt very lost in the sauce, just kind of trying to survive the day because by this point, so much more shit that happened to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like by this point, I, I done, I done damn near been through it all. And by the time I was 21, I had done already developed a very unhealthy drug habit. I had a very, very bad relationship with drugs and alcohol. I had very toxic relationships with the men and women that I was dating. Um, it was bad. So by 21, I had already been sexually assaulted. Um, 
I had already experienced my best friend passing away in front of me, being shot and killed. And by that time, I was just weary, okay, to say the least. Like, I was fucking weary. But I've been conditioned to believe that regardless of what the fuck is going on, you get up and you do what you need to do. Like, my mental health, even though I had the upbringing that I had, my mental health was never prioritized by my family or by myself. Because I, too, am to, you know, blame for it, uh, for a lot of, you know, for the way that a lot of things happen. Because part of it is because I didn't know no better, no better and part of it is because I just didn't have the strength at the time to do nothing about my situation except for exactly what the fuck I was doing, which was, you know, doing drugs and fucking with niggas that didn't mean me no good. So, yeah. By 21, I'm lost in the sauce. And I really just needed a fucking Hail Mary of, of some sort. But instead, I just pushed through and I just pushed through. And that was so toxic to the point where my battle with depression and PTSD, I almost succumbed to that battle. I attempted to succumb to that battle. And um, it's going on five years that... I would have passed away. So, and I don't mean to get emotional, but. I'm just being transparent with y'all. But yes. So I wish that I would have had the guidance. And I wish I knew what I know now. And I'm so glad that I'm still here. And yes, yeah, I'm just glad I'm still here. So after that happened... I ended up being hospitalized. You know, they put the PEC on you, girl, baby. I had to be in the hospital for 72 hours after that happened. But that 72 hours was crazy enough to say a much-needed reset. Because I really did need to be completely and totally removed from my environment to get better. Because I couldn't stay in the same place that was making me sick and when i say place i mean environment home mindset like i couldn't whatever that was obviously i couldn't be there because if i stayed there then i wouldn't be here like i wouldn't be making this video for y'all so it was a very very eye-opening experience for me having to be hospitalized for my mental health but i did let it go on for so long and i ignored things for so long and i wish that i wouldn't have done that i wish i would have had the emotional intelligence i wish i would have had the support the knowledge to do something about my situation or the motivation to do something about my situation before shit went too far because it went too far and I took matters into my own hands and I shouldn't have did that. So that's why I'm making this video. And that's why I'm just pushing through the tears, bitch. Because it's important that we take this serious. Because you got to think about how many people we done lost already. Like, we got to take it serious. Like, we have to take it serious. So that really began my healing in a way. And healing is not linear whatsoever. I mean, I, I relapsed, you know what I'm saying? I still was in toxic relationships. I it, it took a long time for me to get to right here where I can say that, you know, I have my days, but I'm stable. Like, I'm not depressed. I, I feel motivated to get up and do the things, you know, that I need to do and that I want to do. Like I said, I still have my days, but 
Baby, not days like them. When they say better days coming, believe it, because whew, they coming, okay? So that really kick-started my healing, and it made me believe that, you know, even though I tried to take matters into my own hands, there's a power greater than me that is the reason I'm here. So, you know, I'm not perfect. I keep saying that. But it's been a journey, and, and I can honestly say ever since I went away and I came home and, and I made the decision to get better, I have gotten better. Like, when I look back at where I was five years ago and where I'm at now and the way that I have transformed and, and transformed my life, like, I couldn't be more proud of myself. But that's only because I prioritize my mental health. I couldn't have done that without doing that because everything, you know, it was to the point where it was to my detriment. So I had to really prioritize my mental health and get better because I wasn't doing good. But now I'm better. I'm better. Get Christette on the line. Better. Get her. Call up. Let her know. I'm better. Better than I was. And that's always what matters. Child, that got heavy. That got heavy. That got way heavier than I expected. Okay, so boom. Now I want to talk about coping, healthy coping mechanisms. So y'all know I done been through the rain and the pain. Now I'm a dirty motherfucker. So we're going to talk about my healthy coping mechanisms and how I clean my space and my aura. And I become this zen bad bitch that y'all see every day. Laughing, smiling, and talking that shit. First thing you got to do, you have to admit you need help. Don't be in denial. Like, don't don't listen to the people. Oh, just push through. Just pray about it. And I love God. God is the reason I'm here. But you need somebody who is trained to help you organize and sort out your mind. Okay? You have to admit that I don't have control, okay? I need to do something about this shit. So that's the first fucking thing. So once you done admitted you need help, that's when you figure out how to find some help. Now, good thing y'all have me, because I can tell y'all how to find some help. So... If you're in the Baton Rouge area, I go to All Star Community Care. Well, we do it on Zoom. My therapist is great. Well, I'm actually about to get a new therapist because my therapist got a new job, a better job for her. So I'm happy for her. So we'll be parting ways. Um, and I'll be getting a new therapist soon. But I went through All Star Community Care. They accept Medicaid, they accept most insurances. Um, so if you need somebody, I'm telling y'all, this is where I go. I've, I've had a wonderful experience with my therapist that I had, and I'm sure the next one is going to be just as good, but reach out and, you know, jump on that computer. Y'all on them phones all day, baby, get on that phone, you know, and look up therapists in your area, counselors in your area. If you don't have insurance, apply for Medicaid. If you need to know what the, if you don't have insurance, apply for Medicaid. Uh, you know, if you can get it through your job, get it through there. There's also counselors and therapists who specialize in low income. All I'm saying is, if you need help, it's available to you. Hit me up. If you need help, you don't know what to search for, you don't know what to look for, I will help you. Please don't be mad if I take a while to get back to you, but I'm going to reply. Just give me a second. But yes, please just look up mental health counselors, therapists in your area. Um, if it's recommended that you need to see a psychiatrist, which ain't nothing to shame to need to see a psychiatrist because some of us need medication. And that's fine. That's perfectly okay, baby. Whatever you need to do to be okay, whatever regimen works best for you, is no judgment or nothing like that. I'm just letting you know that you don't have to suffer and you don't have to suffer in silence. Like, it's help out there, like, it's, it's definitely out there. You do not have to, you don't have to suffer, baby, because it's possible. It's possible, and there's help out here if you need it. You do not have to be depressed, sad, lonely, 
feeling worthless, I'm telling you, it's people out here that's waiting to help you, waiting to help you transform your life. Because without those people and me learning different steps on how to deal with my official diagnosis is PTSD and depression. So those are my official diagnosis and acute anxiety. Um, so if I didn't have someone to diagnose me, let me know, okay, you know, we came up with a treatment plan and I've been working it so far and I've been able to, like I said, completely transform my situation. I'm telling you it's possible because I was lost in the sauce. Listen to me, hear me what I say. Also, I don't know if y'all are religious. I touched on religion just a little bit, but I'm not talking about in the sense of where it's toxic and it's like telling you to ignore your mental health and just put it in God's hands because sometimes, you know, God gave us free will and he gave us that for a reason to be able to work and create the realities we want, baby. Like, you could pray, pray, pray all day, but if you ain't doing nothing about it, if you ain't seeking out the help that you need, baby, it's just, it's just gonna be praying upon their bills. I hate to hear it, but spirituality has really, 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 really helped me 100%, especially after I lost my daughter. Um, I really just like tapped into like meditating and connecting with my ancestors and just becoming more and more aware and just giving glory and reverence to God and the higher power before me. Because if it wasn't for, I would, you know, I wouldn't even be able to sit here in front of you. So I said that to say, find something, find whatever you need and, and hold on to it and let that be your motivation. Let that help you get you to where you need to be. Like, I don't care if you need to find like a wig in the closet to live for, like find it and hold on to it and implement loving on that <laughs> into your everyday life. Do whatever you need to do to be here because... We all have our thing and like we all have been through some things. So spirituality is one of those things that has really, really helped me. I did a lot of shadow work, a lot of like looking within and figuring out where she started and where it come from. And a lot of the things that used to trigger me don't trigger me no more. And that's how you know the work is working. When the shit that used to trigger you don't trigger you no more, or at least it doesn't trigger like a toxic reaction in the way that it used to. That's when you know you're on to something, okay? So before I get too long-winded, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. This has been a great session with you guys. I'm so glad that you guys could join me in the sesh. Things got a little heavy, but all that means is that we got to know each other a little better. So I got to tell y'all about the giveaway. So once I get to 500 subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway. So help me get to 500 subscribers. I'm going to give away $100 on Cash App to one winner. I said I was going to, I thought about breaking it up and doing like $25. What y'all think? Leave, leave a comment. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave a comment and let me know if you think that I should do four winners for $25 or one winner for $100. But 500 subscribers, I'm going to give y'all $100. I ain't got $500 to give y'all yet, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, but I just want to give back and show my support. Make sure that you like, comment, leave that comment that I just told y'all to leave, and subscribe to my channel. You don't want to miss another upload. I've been doing good with the consistency, baby. Let's go. Claps for me. Claps for moi. But thank you so much for joining me once again. I love y'all. I love y'all so much. Goodbye.